Hello, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're from. Uh, I might ask you to like and subscribe to the channel, help the channel grow. But first of all, before we carry on, let me explain to you. No matter how much you pull a chicken's neck, you will never turn it into a turkey. But anyway, before we go any further, it will not be applicable to absolutely everybody. Everybody has different CPUs, different GPUs, different memory, and different systems. But we'll go over a few settings that might help you with the performance in Grey Zone Warfare. And bear in mind that the game is not optimized yet for performance, so we not all experience the maximum performance that we can from this game, but we will go over a few settings and hopefully this will help some of you out. Right, one of the first things we need to be setting is, or checking is, I want you to go in and have a look at the help section and system information. In here, you'll notice you'll see something called resizable bar. And you see mine says yes. That means resizable bar is active. And this will help with performance on your PC massively, especially when playing games. I've come across people in the past where they're moaning about FPS in certain games, especially Grey Zone Warfare, and they've got like 40,000 series graphics cards, and this is not switched on. Now I can't address or tell you how to switch this on because it's in a motherboard setting and every motherboard is different. So the best thing I can advise you is go on YouTube, Google your motherboard and look for enable resizable bar. And uh, I'm sure there's enough information out there to tell you how to enable this. So it will involve you going in the BIOS of your motherboard. So that's one of the first things you want to be looking at. Another thing I want to show you is also uh, if you go into uh, change display resolutions and you go down to the bottom and you will see use NVIDIA color settings. Now this is one thing I noticed very much, especially on my own system as well. Uh, output color depth. Now mine was running on 10PC. And what was happening is I was getting a lot of ghosting and uh, a lot of, uh, when I got the map up and I zoomed in and I was scrolling the map up and down a little bit, you could see shadowing on the LZs and stuff like that. And uh, <clears throat> I messed about with the settings a few bit, put it to 12 BC and it solved this problem for me. I'm not saying it's going to work for you, but it may help. It certainly helped for one or two other people that uh, I've done this with. So maybe take a look at that. So now let's go back into manage 3D settings. Okay. A lot of these settings you've seen here will be for older games. So it's not really applicable uh, for Grey Zone Warfare. Well, there's a few things that you can change a little bit just to help you with performance. Low latency mode. This will work better for some and not for others. Uh, I've tested it on and off myself and not noticed any difference. Before we go any further, I run a RTX 4090, a Ryzen 9 uh, CPU. Uh, so you could play about with a uh, low latency on and off. These are all going to be experimental things that you're going to have to do on and off and check out performances. Sometimes you'll adjust some of these and you'll have to reboot the PC. Sometimes just to reboot in the game, I'll have an effect. Sometimes you can adjust some of these things and it'll work immediately. So that's another thing you've got to keep in mind. Just because you change something don't necessarily mean it's going to be activated straight away. Uh, okay, preferred refresh rate. I have it set to iced available. That's not the default. The default is application controlled, but I have it on iced available. I don't, I don't mess about with the catch size or anything like that. I have done in the past. I didn't see any relevance to the gameplay uh, at all. Also, if you don't want to run these on your computer constantly, you can go in program settings, select the game, 
and adjust them that way so as it'll revert to that when it goes to play that certain game. Another thing I want to talk about, which I'm not running at the moment, is G Sync. G Sync V Sync. G Sync V Sync, what that does, it allows your monitor to talk with your graphics card and stop screen tearing. Uh, as you can see, I've got sc three screens on my setup. I've run with G Sync on and G Sync off. And same again, there's not a massive difference in performance, nothing to write home about. But another thing that you might not notice is if you are running G-Sync, V-Sync is, if you go in display up here, this will light up. And if you put a little tick in there, it will bring a little marker on your screen saying that it's activated when you're in the game or when you're in programs that's using V-Sync, G-Sync. V-Sync, G-Sync uh, is something that, same as I say, links your graphics card with your TV and your graphics card. Uh, but when using that, it creates a millisecond's worth of input delay. Uh, but you can get around this a little bit if you use V-Sync and G-Sync. Yes, you can use both together, and it's actually better uh, because it reduces that millisecond input lag even further. Of course, everybody's monitor is going to be different. They're all going to have different milliseconds of response time and stuff like that. So it's another thing that you can play about with, see if you get a better performance or not, or something to look into. At the moment, I'm running it off. For months, I've had it on. I'm just testing it with it off. Uh, so that's another thing. Also, you can run this in enable it in full screen mode or windowed in full screen mode. So bearing in mind, if you play the game, in full screen mode, which probably most 10 op operators do, in uh, full screen mode. But if you play in Windows 11, you can play in windowed full and uh, full screen mode and it, it, it enable that. And it does the same thing as what happens in uh, Windows uh, 10. Uh, whereas if you don't run that in Windows 10, I believe you get performance issues. So that's another thing you can look out for. Uh, and, and adjust. These are all going to be experimental things because they no, they ain't going to work for everybody. Same as I said before, we've all got different PCs, different builds, different cooling systems, different memory types, different memory speeds, brands. Same case goes for hard drives as well, M.2 drives. But it's something to play about with. Uh, let's have a look at uh, Manage 3D Settings. Uh, let's have a look. I use the advanced 3D image settings. I run a 4K monitor. When I'm streaming, I get about 120 FPS in grey zone warfare. If I'm not streaming, not using OBS, not got my camera set up and stuff, I get about, well, I max the monitor out. That's something to, to think about as well. If you're streaming, you know, using OBS softwares or other softwares, all the stuff you have running in the background of your computer can and will alter the performance or FPS that you get in the game. Uh, so we can get rid of that at the moment. And uh, we can go into display settings. Let me get this up over here. This is another big talking point. We want to be going into, this will be slightly different as well if you're on Windows 10, but it's the same thing basically. Change default graphic settings. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Reduces latency in performance. You will need to restart your PC to have the changes take effect. I run this on. I've not tried it with off, it's something I'm to do, but people in my chat report in turning this off improves their FPS. So uh, maybe you could try that as well. I would recommend, and I've done it with other people before, is whether it's been off and they've been struggling with FPS, turn it on. Uh, okay, but that's another setting you need to be looking at to turn on or off. Optimize for Windows games, that's grayed out because it is. And pretty much there's not much, much not much more difference that you can change to optimize the game, really. If you go in game settings, in the actual game settings, I would start off with low across the board. So turn everything to low. See how your computer, how your rig handles it. 
then maybe go if you can push up to more to medium maximum epic or whatever you know just build your way up see how things uh perform if you are playing on a 2000 series graphics cards you must be struggling like hell <clears throat> i played with a, a guy the other day he was on a, a 2090 he says we helped me in tiger bay literally crashed five or six times within half an hour of trying to get to tiger bay i said what's your frames per second like fps and he's like my fps is like 30 40 and this is what i'm noticing as well a lot of people are running around with just iron sights with 1080p monitors uh, low end graphics cards because if they put any sort of 18 times zoom scope on or anything like that it's, it's unplayable i uh, i got a brother-in-law who owns a 1080 graphics card we had that graphics card bought over here put in my system i run it on a 1080p monitor and the performance was absolutely horrendous we went to start a town we got like 30 frames per second as soon as we started to aim at ai uh, the game just locked up. It would just freeze. There's no way you could play it at all on a 1080. So I hate to see them advertise it on Steam to playable on a 1080 graphics card because it's just, I'd like to see them do it. But from my experience with it, it's it's not possible. <laughs> Nothing much more unless you start going into CPU overclocking and memory overclocking, GPU overclocking and stuff like that that you can really do to alter too much performance. And something that I don't probably recommend with this game anyway, uh, if I'm completely honest with you, uh, especially with being in choppers. I mean, we're having to reduce the frequency of the CPU so they don't overeat when you're on choppers and stuff like that. The game is needs serious optimization. And if we go by the game plan about the game's not going to be ready or until uh, sort of 2027, I'm afraid the 4090 is going to be a low-end graphics card by then. So. So there's not much else I can really uh, say to you, really, other than uh, try and keep everything as low as possible and work your way upwards rather than going flat out. It's a great game. It's got a great foundation. It needs a hell of a lot of work doing to it, especially performance-wise. And in-game play mechanics and stuff like that need altering in the game. Uh, I'm glad to hear that they are starting to take new devs on, which they said they wasn't going to do in one of the twitch uh, videos because they said they couldn't manage them if they had too many but it seems like they're starting to listen to the community a little bit and get some more devs in to sort these uh, to sort these problems out on a faster because it's it's sometimes it's not enjoyable playing the game you know we all get frustrated uh, and stuff like that, you, you know and you got ai stuck in the wall you're getting one tap from three mile away uh you know you're just in the middle of your fight or whatever in tiger bay or whatever and you you know, even with a 4090 and a great graphics card, you know, and and then you start to freeze or lag a little bit, uh, maybe down to the server, FPS problems or whatever in, in Tiger Bay or whatever. They'll have this fixed or a lot of it fixed to the night mode and we'll get to experience the game with better performances. But one thing I will say is that some of these settings, you can keep trying to turn them and change them as much as you like. Same as I said before. Sometimes it's not your hardware problem, it's rather a server problem, the game optimization problem. Remember what I said at the start of the video? Don't matter how much you pull a, a chicken's neck, it will never turn it into a turkey. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Helps the channel grow. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and we'll try and answer them as best as possible. Bye.